The Euphrates, one of the world's most significant rivers, has just been the subject of a crazy new discovery. You're already thinking, why do I care about a river? Well, its location, its historical and cultural importance is reason enough, but now this new discovery could change a lot of things. Because of the river's importance, much research has been done on it to learn more about our culture's history. As more and more of the region's mysteries remain unsolved, so does the public's fascination with the secrets the river can hold. For Christians, the name Euphrates can evoke scenes from the Book of Genesis or the Book of Revelation. Someone who has taken geography seriously will know everything about this enormous canal. We know that you, no matter where you fall on the social spectrum, value the fresh perspectives it offers. The river is one of the longest and most important in all of Western Asia. For the people here, that means that their cattle are getting sick. If you're looking for the longest and most significant river in all of Western Asia, it's easily the Euphrates. The length of this river is estimated at 2,740 kilometers. Did you know? The Kara River and the Murad River joined to create this river. The Kabur River, which rises in southeast Turkey, is the river's most important tributary. Mesopotamia refers to the land around the Euphrates River and eastern Syria. The Balik River flows into the Euphrates home to about 50 distinct fish species. Actually, water for the river is mostly sourced from precipitation and melting snow. Subtropical, hot, and dry best describe the climate here. Nearly 193,000 square miles are included within the river's drainage basin. April and May are the months when the river is at its fullest, although with the current drought, it is at its worst. Now, why does it hold such high value? This river was an important link in the Silk Road commerce route between Central Asia and Mesopotamia. Wild boar, gray wolves, golden jackals, red foxes, leopards, and lions all made their homes in the river valley. Many of the world's greatest ancient towns were built along this valley's banks because of its convenient location for irrigating crops. Along with the Tigris, this river is one of the two major arteries of Mesopotamia, so there are a lot of communities that depend on a strong Euphrates River. The ancient Sumerians referred to it as Id Eugenia, while the Babylonians and Assyrians used the name Paradu. From its origins in the southeast Turkish highlands, it flows through the southern foothills into Syria and into Iraq carrying with it the rich flora of the region. Even though humans have occupied and badly harmed the land in the Euphrates Basin for millennia, the region's native flora has persisted. Even though the temperature outside was 110 degrees Fahrenheit, the Ishtar Gate, a towering blue duplicate of the original, composed of blue enamel glazed bricks, engraved with bas-reliefs portraying dragons and bulls, stands tall. Walking through the processional way, you can find ancient Babylon's main roadway by descending a flight of stone steps. There were mud brick walls at least 15 feet high on each side of the crumbling highway, and they dated back 2,600 years. They were decorated with ancient friezes of lions and serpent dragons, emblems of the deity Marduk, and engraved with cuneiform inscriptions. To construct the promenade, they pulled down the building material for it by boats along the river. The historical region seems to be along the path of the Euphrates River. High walls on both sides prevent flooding during wet seasons. Agricultural prosperity and Babylon's exceptional riches were both aided by the proximity of the Tigris, the second biggest river in Iraq, which ran close to the north of the city and was connected to the Euphrates by a network of channels that irrigated the area. Around 3,770 BCE, King Hammurabi of Mesopotamia enacted one of the first legal systems in the world, built vast fortifications and elaborate temples, and unified all of Mesopotamia under his rule. Nebuchadnezzar II, the most powerful monarch of Babylon, captured Jerusalem and banished the Jews, which is referenced in Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and mourned when we recalled Zion. In addition, he designed and built the Hanging Gardens, whose intricate tiered construction and irrigation system earned them a place among the seven wonders of the ancient world. 
Herodotus, a Greek historian, said that, in beauty, there is no other city that approaches Babylon. There hasn't been a large epidemic of cholera in over a decade, and now thousands of children in neighboring nations are in danger because of it. A cholera epidemic is already catastrophic, and a global scarcity of vaccinations might make it far worse. The original dose of two has been halved by the World Health Organization. As of today, October 25, 2018, there have been no reported cases of cholera in Lebanon since the first one was found on October 6, 1993, in a remote part of the northern governorate of Akar. The public health minister has received reports of 803 cases of sickness, either verified or suspected, and 11 fatalities. More than half of all occurrences occur in children younger than 14 years old. As the price of bottled water rises three to five-fold from last year, communities have been forced to rely on unreliable water sources. As the unprecedented socioeconomic crisis has put three-quarters of the population in poverty, caused frequent power outages, and worsened cash crisis for millions of people, Due to a lack of funding, inadequate water and sanitation services have persisted for a long period. Increases in both confirmed and suspected cases of cholera have been recorded in neighboring Syria, which is just a short distance from Lebanon. On October 15th, 75 people were verified to have died from the virus, while the World Health Organization registered 20,014 instances of possible exposure. We now have verified instances in all 14 of Syria's governorates. According to Save the Children, the cholera outbreak in Syria may have originated in communities located near the Euphrates River, which is experiencing record low water levels, due in part to Syria's greatest drought in decades. Nadia, a Syrian mom of five, was born in the city of Raqqa. Two of her kids became ill after drinking the water she had given them. Stomach problems, including cramps and diarrhea, occurred. For the sake of my kids, cholera is a major concern of mine. As a newly moved family on a limited budget, I've been unable to afford to stock up on bottled mineral water for the kids. Nadia dreamed of the day when she could give her family drinkable water again. In a statement, Hamdan Al-Salam, the regional manager for Save the Children in the northern Syrian city of Raqqa, said, if precautions aren't followed, the cholera epidemic might expand. The Euphrates River is vital for the survival of countless people, providing them with potable water and agricultural supplies. An unprecedented 865 cases of cholera were reported in Iraq this summer. Vegetables irrigated with sewage water owing to drought in significant rivers are blamed by scientists as the source of the pandemic illness that disproportionately afflicted individuals who were forced to evacuate their homes inside the nation. Northern Canada and the United States felt the hardest effects of the pandemic. However, there is worry that cholera may return in the coming weeks as irrigation systems continue to suffer from the effects of the extended drought. It's possible that the speed with which a disease spreads in the modern world is accelerated by the ease with which individuals may now move across nations. Climate change, food shortages, and lack of access to medical care have all contributed to the poor health of millions of children in countries like Iraq, Lebanon, and Syria. Countries with inadequate health and water systems are particularly at risk for the development of this avoidable illness. Concerned about the spread of cholera in Iraq and Syria, Jordan has started conducting cholera monitoring and food import checks along its borders with those countries. Keeping a watch out for the spread of cholera is crucial, since more than half of the refugees in the Zatari camp are children. In the refugee camp, health and hygiene education have become a top priority, thanks to the efforts of organizations like Save the Children and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. An outbreak of this illness may have disastrous implications for the region owing to the current weak infrastructure for treating and preventing sickness, says Dr. Ibrahim Shihab, Save the Children's Regional Health Advisor for MENA and EE. During cholera epidemics, children are at a higher risk than adults. About a third of the Syrians affected are youngsters younger than 10 years old. Women who are pregnant and children under the age of five who are vulnerable due to underlying health issues, starvation, or lack of access to proper health care may suffer the most from the effects of cholera. 
The infection might spread to neighboring nations if suitable measures aren't taken to contain it. This epidemic has had a disproportionate impact on children. So we are asking for more money so that we can help those who have been affected. Safe drinking water and working sanitary facilities are crucial to the reconstruction of Syrian society. As part of their reaction, Save the Children plans to provide hygiene kits, conduct frequent water quality tests, educate people about the significance of personal cleanliness, and chlorinate the cleansed water. Together with other organizations, Save the Children is implementing the interagency cholera prevention, preparedness, and response plan to combat the cholera epidemic in Lebanon. The goal is to decrease the frequency of outbreaks of waterborne illness at schools and in the surrounding communities by improving children's access to clean water, improved sanitation, and better hygiene. Communities may help spread the word about permanent solutions, such as UV solar-powered systems for cleaning water by distributing soap, hygiene kits, and chlorination tablets and making public service announcements. Both Save the Children and the UNHCR maintain a community health program at the Zatari refugee camp in Jordan to educate the populace about potential health threats and to help people in need get in touch with medical professionals. Community health workers conduct home visits and take part in other community mobilization activities. When inpatient care is required, patients are moved to outpatient facilities where they receive treatment and are strongly encouraged to keep their scheduled visits. Will this terrible discovery forever change the landscape of the region? Tell us in the comments, leave a like, and subscribe for more videos like this.